Hello and welcome to Mickeyology, where we take Disney movies a little too seriously in an ongoing effort to trace them to their most likely historical settings. I'm Austin Rathon, history teacher and lifelong Disney devotee, and today we are tackling one of Disney's newest animated classics, Encanto. My wife and I saw Encanto on Thanksgiving Day 2021, the day after the movie came out, and we loved it. We loved the characters, the music, and the animation, and to this day there is nothing that will make my wife laugh harder than seeing the donkeys dance during the song's surface pressure. However, there's a question that lingered with me after we got out of the movie, and that was, when and where does Encanto take place? Now, at this point, you may roll your eyes and say, well, you must ask that question about every Disney movie you see. I actually don't. I mean, I do when it's time to make a video, but this was the first time where I was watching a Disney animated movie and I was watching a specific scene from Encanto and I thought they are hinting at something here. There is a historical background to what I am seeing on the screen. So let's examine the clues together and see if we can tell when and where Encanto takes place. Clue number one, music. Encanto has many catchy songs that showcase various styles of Latin music. I believe one song in particular tells us where the film takes place. Carlos Vives sings the song toward the beginning of the film, and I believe one of the lyrics might hint at the film's location. Let me play you a clip and see if you can pick up on it. Yeah, this one's obvious. Encanto takes place in the South American country of Colombia. This also gives us a hint as to when the movie takes place, because Colombia became independent in the year 1819. Therefore, the movie must take place sometime after that. However, Colombia is divided into several different regions. Which one is the home to the family Madrigal? Clue number two, scenery. Colombia is a geographically diverse country with many different regions. It contains mountains, valleys, jungles, deserts, and coastlines by both the Caribbean Sea and the Pacific Ocean. Filmmakers decided to incorporate all of Colombia's various landscapes into Encanto by featuring each region in different rooms of the Madrigal Casita. For example, Bruno's room was inspired by the Colombian rock formations the Estoraques, and Antonio's room was inspired by the Choco rainforest region. Disney filmmakers visited Colombia and saw the country's diverse geography firsthand. They went to Bogotá, Cartagena, Parichara, Salento, Palenque, and the Cocora Valley. However, of all the regions the artists visited, it was the Cocora Valley that inspired them most. In a Disney Plus featurette, co-director Jared Bush said, Once we were walking through those amazing wax palms and seeing the clouds coming over the mountains, it was so picturesque and unusual and wonderful, we knew that that's where the movie should be set. It's easy to see how closely that place resembles the valley in the film. Therefore, we know that Encanto clearly takes place in the Cocora Valley of Colombia. That still leaves the question of when the film takes place. Lucky for us, the casita is filled with clues that may hold the answer. Clue number three, objects. The Madrigal family lives isolated in the safety of their Encanto. Since we never see any of them leave the valley, we don't get to see much of the outside world. However, the casita itself is littered with objects that hint at the film's place in time, six of which are especially helpful. First is an accordion. Near the beginning of the film, Mirabel plays an accordion, and we know that the accordion was invented in the 1820s. It arrived in Colombia in the mid-19th century. Therefore, we know that Encanto must take place sometime after that. Second is a sewing machine. In Mirabel's room, we get a glimpse of an old-fashioned sewing machine. This appears to be a Singer sewing machine, which Isaac Singer patented in the year 1851. Therefore, we know that the movie must take place sometime after that. Third is flash powder. After Antonio receives his gift, the Madrigal family, everyone except Mirabel, gathers for a photo. The photographer, in order to achieve a flash, ignites a substance called flash powder, which came out in 1887. Therefore, we know the movie must take place sometime after that year. Fourth is electricity. During the song Dos Oruguitas, we see a flashback to the night Abuela Alma met Abuelo Pedro. 
The two of them are clinging to what appear to be electric lampposts. Now, electric light arrived in Colombia around the year 1890, so we know the movie must take place sometime after that. Fifth, surprisingly enough, is the Titanic. In the song's surface pressure, we see a gag referencing the Titanic sinking, complete with an orchestra of burros who are playing the violin as the ship barrels toward an iceberg. If this scene is taking place inside Luisa's mind, then she must be aware of the Titanic sinking, and that happened in 1912. Therefore, the film might take place after that year. Finally, when Mirabel visits Bruno, he offers to have his rats entertain her. He seems to know about television, even though he doesn't have a TV himself. Instead, he's constructed these bizarre little cardboard TV screen cutouts for his rats, and he offers Mirabel the option of seeing sports, game shows, telenovelas. Now, the first TV game show and the first televised soccer match aired in 1938. The first telenovelas didn't come out until the 1950s. Therefore, the film must take place sometime during or after the 50s. Before we can say for certain the film takes place in the 50s, though, we have to account for one more scene, one that's crucial to Encanto's story. During the song Dos Uruguitas, we see a flashback that tells us why Mirabel's abuela came to the valley where they now live. Mirabel's grandparents were forced to flee their home when men attacked their town. As they were fleeing, a group of armed horsemen came to hunt them down. Mirabel's grandfather died fending off these attackers, sacrificing himself to save his neighbors, his wife, and his newborn children. If we want to know for certain when Encanto takes place, we must identify when this event occurred. To find that out, we have to uncover an episode in Colombian history that would have forced families like the Madrigals to become refugees. Clue number four, historical context. One of the most common reasons that people become refugees is war, which tends to cause the kind of violence and political unrest that seem to have forced the Madrigals to leave their town. Colombia had several major wars in the 19th and 20th centuries. There was the War for Independence, which lasted from 1810 to 1823, the War of a Thousand Days, which lasted from 1899 to 1903, and La Violencia, which lasted from 1948 to 1958. Which of these wars, if any, is the one that would have displaced the Madrigals. Well, on the night that Antonio receives his gift, Abuela gives a speech to her guests in which she says, 50 years ago, in our darkest moment, this candle blessed us with a miracle. If it's been 50 years, then the Madrigals can't have fled during the War for Independence. That would put the story around the year 1860, so it's too early for characters to be using things like flash powder and talking about things like telenovelas. They can't have fled from La Violencia either because that would put the story around the year 2000, which is too late for characters to be using things like flash powder. However, if they fled during the War of a Thousand Days, that would put the story around the year 1950, which is exactly the year that all the rest of the evidence suggests. So the question is, was the War of a Thousand Days violent and severe enough to displace families like the Madrigals? In her book, Inside Colombia, Professor Grace Livingstone wrote, quote, In the 19th century, there were eight civil wars. As liberal and conservative peasant armies swept through villages committing atrocities, each generation vowed to avenge the last attack, and a dynamic of violence followed by reprisals emerged. The longest and bloodiest of the bipartisan wars was the War of a Thousand Days, in which an estimated 100,000 people died. The war was a fight between Colombian liberals and Colombian conservatives. In 1898, Colombia's conservatives made Manuel Antonio San Clemente, a conservative, the new president. Colombia's liberals were angry at this, because not only had the conservatives kept liberals out of the presidency for years, but also barred them from holding most other offices in the national and even local government. At the same time, one of Colombia's most important exports, coffee, took a steep drop in price, leading to economic instability. Liberals blamed the conservative government for causing all this turmoil and rebelled against what they saw as a totalitarian regime. In 1899, the liberals went to war with the government. The two sides fought each other for months on land and water. At first, the conservatives had the upper hand, but then the tide turned in the liberals' favor. Then, in May 1900, the two sides faced off in the Battle of Palo Negro. This battle lasted for two weeks and caused the deaths of 4,000 men. 
After the battle, bodies lay strewn across the battlefield. Some of them were already dead, but others lay there and had to die a slow and excruciating death. Family members wandered the battlefield searching for their loved ones. Nuns helped people in need on both sides, and the dead and decaying bodies contaminated the local water supply. After this battle, though, the liberals refused to give up, and they switched to guerrilla tactics. Both sides, liberal and conservative, began recruiting militias, but they had little control over these groups. So soon, this warfare devolved into chaos, and bandits swept through the countryside committing atrocities. This is the phase of the war that most likely would have displaced the Madrigals. The Madrigals and their neighbors were probably raided by either a conservative or a liberal militia, and that militia was either responding to the most recent attack, or maybe just pillaging a town because no one could really stop them. Concept art from the film supports the theory that the Madrigals left during the War of a Thousand Days. In a deleted scene, Abuela and Mirabel return to Abuela's town. There, Abuela sees a mural dedicated to her late husband. It says, Pablo Madrigal, 1872 to 1900. Now, Disney changed Abuela's name from Pablo to Pedro, but this shows that they did intend, at least at one point, to set Abuelo's death during the guerrilla period of the War of a Thousand Days, which would mean Mirabel's story unfolds in the 1950s. Conclusion Based on the movie's music, scenery, objects, and historical context, I am placing Encanto in the Cocora Valley of Colombia, circa 1950. So, what do you think of my findings? When and where do you think Encanto takes place? Let me know in the comments, and let me know which Disney movie you would like me to analyze next. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on social media, and as always, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.